Yo, 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 what is up guys? It's Cohen back here again today with another video. Today's video is another Thunder one. I know I make a lot of Thunder videos. It's almost like I'm a fan or something, but I really wanted to make this video for a while because the player I want to talk about today is Alexei Pokushevsky, who in my opinion is one of the most unique, if not the most unique players in the entire NBA. A guy that I am super high on who I think could be the next unicorn type player in the NBA. And not only me, but other people, other Thunder fans, other people around the league are really high on him. And I wanted to explain to you why, because I feel like he's not a lot of guy that has gotten or a guy that has not gotten a lot of attention from the overall NBA media, partially because the Thunder are really bad, and partially because his stats don't pop out to you. I'll talk about all that in a second. But in my opinion, I think Alexei Pokushevsky has all NBA type potential. If you have to only looked at his stats, or you've seen the lowlights of him making bad turnovers and stuff like that, you're going to think I'm crazy. But I promise, stick around for this entire video, and I promise I'll explain to you why I see that. At the end of the video, if you still don't buy it, you can call me biased in the comment section below. Leave a subscribe while you're at that, but um, at least stick around for the entire video so I can explain to you my case and talk to you about what I've seen in Pokushevsky and why me and so many others are so high on him. So that being said, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you like this type of content, NBA content pretty much every single day, sometimes twice a day, uh, depending on what day it is, how the games go and stuff like that. So I'll start from the beginning. Alexei Pokushevsky is drafted 17th overall by the Thunder in the first round of this past draft. He is 18 years old when he is drafted. He is the youngest player in the NBA as of right now. Uh, you might see this video in like a year, like it might pop up in your suggested page. But as of right now, April 22nd, 2021, Alexei Pokushevsky is the youngest player in the NBA, just 19 years old. He's seven feet tall and weighs only 190 pounds. He's like a twig. I am six feet tall and I weigh 160 pounds. He is a whole foot taller and only 30 pounds more. And I think I'm built like Brandon Ingram, like super skinny lanky. So you can kind of picture that for Pogoshevsky if you not have, have not seen him. And coming into the draft, he was an unknown to most NBA fans. There were some rumors that Sam Presti was kind of looking at him, but not many rumors about the Thunder actually come true. Sometimes there's some that end up leaking, but the Thunder let very little leak. And so I wasn't very sure which way we we're going to go in the draft. However, I pick 17, he's available, and it was Poku's name that was called. Poku is his nickname. I'll call him that a lot in this video. I thought I would let you know before you're like, who the hell is this Poku guy? Now, Pokushevsky, prior to being drafted, played in the Greek A2 League, which is kind of unknown to most fans. But it's the same league that has produced an MVP level talent before in Giannis Antetokounmpo. That was the league that Giannis played in before coming over to the NBA. So, you know, there, there's a parallel there. And when I went to Twitter, his highlights after he was drafted be like, hey, this is the new Thunder player, Alexei Pokushevsky. It took me about 10 minutes to find something. And it was all just like these blurry highlights of him running up the court it, that almost looked like they were in practice gym. So he was not at all your flashy college type guy uh, trying to win a national championship. He was someone who came from overseas and didn't have much national coverage. He, not many people were talking about him before the draft, but he was someone that I knew had high potential. And I knew that he was a swing for the fences pick as soon as we picked him. He's a guy that is very raw, very raw prospect, and some people thought Poku wasn't going to play much in his first season. People thought, oh, he's probably a G League guy, um, but however, he was given pretty solid rotation minutes right out of the gate, and it was immediately clear that he did have a lot of potential. But like I said earlier, that he was very raw. He was a very raw prospect. Um, I'm going to give you his stats now. The morning, they're very ugly. In his first 17 games, this is prior to the All-Star break, uh, in 17.4 minutes per game, Pokushevsky averaged 3.3 uh, .3 points per game three and a half rebounds, uh, 1.2 assists, 1.1 blocks, and 1.3 turnovers on 24% shooting from the field, or 24.7, I'll give him that, and 17.9% shooting from three. With not a, He didn't attempt a single free throw in any of those games, so there's not even a free throw percentage. Um, I'm going to be honest, those are not good stats. <laughs> They're not good at all. And throughout that stretch, Thunder fans started to grow restless. They were um, used to having guys kind of pop off immediately. We just had Lou Gwynn Stort, who came in as an undrafted free agent and had this incredible uh, rise. We're used to guys like Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, MVP type players, guys who, when we swung for the fences trying to pick a, a high level guy, immediately came in and produced. Shea Gilgis Alexander in his first season for us produced incredibly and continues to do so. And so Thunder fans kind of grew restless. And I remember after every game, I tweet out like my thoughts on the game. If we won, I tweet about all the great things that happened that game. And in those post-game tweets, my replies were flooded with people saying, why the hell did we draft Pokushevsky? This guy sucks. Sam Presti messed up. What is he doing? Poku can't do anything right. This guy stinks. And to some people, uh, especially if you just look at the stats, this seemed true. Like this didn't seem out of the question for some people. He wasn't doing much at all statistically in his time on the court. However, if you watched him play, it told a completely different story. Um, from the moment that Pokushevsky stepped on the court, his potential was pretty clear. 
as well as his his confidence. I've never seen a player more confident in his first few games than Pokushevsky was. He was throwing behind the back passes in transition from like his first minute in the league. In like the first like three games he played, he would throw passes and he would do like no look type stuff that way. He would um, pull these like crazy shots out of nowhere, like super deep threes. And um, it was just clear from the beginning that every time and every time he messed up, he got a turnover. He was super down on himself. It was clear he was super confident and that he knew he had the ability to be great. He knew that he should be improving. He should be playing better, but that didn't hurt his confidence. He kept doing these things. And um, in relation to him, the whole throwing the behind the pack back passes in transition, um, it was pretty quickly clear that Pogoshevsky has potential to be an incredible playmaker. Now, throwing the ball out of bounds, like you've seen probably in some of his lowlights, is not exactly what you expect from incredible playmakers. But over the course of the season, Poku has thrown several passes that just blow my mind, especially for a seven footer. So, like some of these are like Jokic esque passes. He'll throw these crazy no look passes. He had one where he would, he uh, just the other day, where he was charging at the basket and he was looking up at the basket and he threw it off deep into the corner on the opposite side of the floor for a three pointer. It was incredible. It was something I didn't even see that happening i thought the passing lane was covered but for pokushevsky it's completely different because he's seven feet tall and he has this super high up viewpoint that lets him get a good look at the floor even me from an like a bird's eye view broadcast camera angle didn't even see the angle that pokushevsky was going for that's how impressive it is and with that length that he has that height he's able to throw the ball over people around people and he's able to make passes happen that for me as someone who's only six feet tall would never be able to make happen and that, combined with his ability to handle the ball in transition, makes Poku already a unique prospect before we get into anything else. Poku Shevsky is legitimately a threat in transition. He handles the ball like a guard. And he's very young and he's very inexperienced in the NBA. And it already feels like he can kind of read NBA defenses and figure out when to attack in transition, when to pull the ball back out, when to make the dime to his teammate in transition. There are times where Poku Shevsky will hit a finger roll layup in transition at seven feet tall. And it looks crazy because of how lanky he is and how tall he is. It just doesn't look right. Um, my, my roommate once said, Pogoshevsky doesn't look like a real person. Because it's just it doesn't look like a skill set and a like body combination that should work, right? And um, just someone at his height shouldn't be able to make plays for people like Poku can't. Uh, additionally, he came into the league with a really solid defensive form. Uh, it was incredibly solid. Even when players get by him, which isn't that easy to do or as easy as you would think with how skinny he is, he has incredible length. I already talked about that, how he doesn't even look like a real person. He has incredible length on the defensive side of the ball that makes it impossible to get shots up over him sometimes. And it makes him a really solid shot blocker and it makes him a really good disruptor of shots. When you challenge Poku at the rim, there's a lot of times where he's going to chase you down and block you or that you're going to have to put it up at an incredibly tough angle because Poku's length allows him to completely take away those angles that you would typically go for at the basket. Um, as he bulks up, like I said, he's only 190 pounds at seven feet tall. And as he bulks up, I really think Poku is going to become a defensive anchor on that on that side of the ball. He has like the length. He has the uh, body. He just has to bulk up. And his rebounding, which probably should be better for a seven footer, I think will also come as he bulks up. Right now, he kind of gets pushed around on the box outs. And sometimes he'll get around those just because of his length and his persistence. But as he bulks up, I think it'll be a lot easier for him to get in position for those rebounds. The big problem in the, so all those things, those showed out in that first half of the season, but the big problem in the first half of the season was his shooting. Like I said before, Poku in that first half of the season shot 24.7% from the field and 17.9% from three in his first 17 games. And I'm going to be honest, that's awful. That is not at all what you want to see. But this was mainly due to his shot selection, and it just seemed like he was uncomfortable with the NBA game. You have to remember, it's a way different game coming from overseas to here. The college game is kind of similar, but it's not exactly the same. But overseas basketball is something that is very, very different. Um, in an, an episode of the Topic Thunder podcast that I'm on, if you haven't seen that, go check it out, where we talked to Mike Muscala, he talked about how different it was in the NBA compared to overseas, that the games are almost like two different sports at times. He had to make a lot of adjustments, and... Uh, he kind of was just strictly spotting up shooting. He would never really search for space. He often settled on the first look he had, which is something that he has improved on since that first stretch of the season. So after those 17 games that he played, Pokushevsky goes into the G League bubble. This was something that a lot of people were upset about, but ultimately it seemed like a great decision for his future. Um, he played a little bit with the OKC Blue and eventually was called up right before the, uh, the playoff run or when the playoff run would have been. They unfortunately did not make the playoffs. Um, rest in peace to the OKC Blue season. I'll be rooting for him next year. But 
Uh, since that he came out of that G League bubble, Poku has looked so much better, and he's been so much improved. Since the All-Star break and since coming back from the G League bubble, Pokushevsky is averaging, he's playing about 28.6 minutes per game, so he's getting a lot of opportunities, 11.6 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 1.1 blocks, and 2.5 and turnovers, while shooting 36.4% from the field, which I know is still not very good, but is much improved from what he was previously. And the big thing is that he's shooting 31.8% from three, which is not very good, but it's it's incredibly better from what it was previously, where I said it was just around 12%. So he's, oh, he's almost tripled what he shot in that stretch of the season. And additionally, he's getting to the free throw line more. He is shooting 78.6% from the free throw line, which, like I said, he's finally getting to. In the first half of the season, he didn't have a single free throw. And now he's shooting them sometimes. And this jump just shows how much the G League bubble helped him. It's a tremendous improvement from where he started. Is it fantastic? No, it's not. Uh, at least when you look at it in terms of most NBA players, but it shows how quickly he can improve at such such a young age and how much he's finding his footing offensively. When you watch Pogoshevsky play, he's found himself in rhythm so much more than he did prior to the break. Um, he takes mid-range jumpers now, something that he really never did in that first half of the season. He shoots step-back three-pointers at times. He uses rhythm dribbles to get himself in that rhythm before catching and shooting just cold off the, like, off the catch. He shoots floaters, he attacks the rim in transition, his confidence has translated into offensive opportunities, and Poku's been capitalizing on them. He has a very quick shot that has deadly potential if it gets consistent, and I think it's going to. He can just shoot virtually right over everyone. And so, I th when he, he continues to keep finding that rhythm, he continues to learn the NBA game when he's finding his spot so much better. There are times now where Poku will have a wide open catch and shoot three, but he'll pump fake and the defender will fly past him and he'll either step up and drill a mid-range jumper or he'll step up and he's enough of a threat at that mid-range that the defender will have to come out of the paint and he can hit the person, usually Moses Brown, in that dunker spot. Or when someone steps up and someone rotates over to help with that dunker spot, he always hits the corner. Pokushevsky has combined his ability to play make with his rising shooting to make him a dangerous threat on the offensive side of the ball. Poku is really showing his potential. And I'm going to remind you one more time, he's 19 years old. He's the youngest player in the NBA, and he's younger than me. The guy who's telling you how good he is, he's younger than me. I'm 20 years old. I turned 21 like a month. He is, he's almost two full years younger than me. He turned 19 in December. He was born in 2001, and he's already being a productive NBA player. So, um, now over the course of this video, I've complimented Poku's playmaking, his defense, his shooting, and his shot blocking. So Poku continues to develop the way I think he's going to, the way that I've talked about in this video. I think these are all going to be strengths of his, massive strengths of his. And that begs the question, what's his weakness? And I believe he has the potential to have very few, if any, weaknesses in his game. A seven-footer that can shoot, defend, playmake, and block shots is virtually unheard of. Most guys usually have a hole in one of those areas, not Pokushevsky, at least not if he keeps developing the way I think he's going to. And it looks like these are all going to be strengths of his going forward because already they're developing into strengths, especially the playmaking, the defensive side of the ball. Those things, his shot blocking, those are things that are already strengths of his and he's getting better at them. And if that shot keeps coming along, it'll open up the rest of his game for him, as well as open up the rest of his game for him when more talent comes onto this Thunder team. We're one of the worst teams in the league at this point. He's played most of the second half of the season without Shea Gilders Alexander, someone who gets players great shot opportunities. And I think once Shea comes back onto the court and once more talent continues to develop and join this young core, Poku is going to get way easier opportunities, which opens up his game a lot more and allows him to find that rhythm more. So, um, with all that being said, I think Poku is the most unique player in the NBA and is going to be the next unicorn type player in the league. I know we talked about Porzingis. I think Nikola Jokic is a unicorn. I think Pokushevsky has the potential to be another unicorn. If you want to see in one stat why Poku is so unique, I'll give you a stat. The most blocks by a rookie this season, and all rookies, is six. The most threes made in a single game by rookies this season is seven. That's both Pokushevsky's numbers. Uh, he leads the he leads all rookies in blocks in a game with six, and all rookies with seven threes in a game. Both his records. In the context of this Thunder team as as a whole, Pokushevsky may have the highest ceiling of anyone on the roster. And yes, I am including SGA. SGA is my favorite player. I love SGA, and I think he's going to be incredible. I'm not saying he's even going to be better than SGA, or that he will reach these lofty expectations I have. But if he does, the league <laughs> the league better look out, um, especially if the Thunder add a top five pick or at least 
or actually even potentially two top top five picks if we get the Rockets pick at five. You add those guys to a core of SGA, Poku, like Pogushevsky. You add to a core with Dort in it, Baisley if you can keep developing, Tail Maladon, another guy who we got in this year's draft that's been really, really good. Ultimately, I think Pokushevsky has the potential to be an all-NBA level player. A combination of the flashes, he, flashes he's shown, his ability to improve in such a small amount of time so rapidly, the fact that he's playing like this without much talent around him, he needs more talent around him to help make that game easier for him, and the fact that he is 19 years old, he needs to bulk up, all of these things I think are his skill set is going to translate as he gets more comfortable, and ultimately he will be a player that could make an all NBA team. I think he's going to be an all-star type guy and I'm not joking. Some people may look at this video, look at Poku stats, watch some of his lowlights and think that I'm an idiot and that I'm joking. And if you don't believe me, watch him play a full game. Go watch, go watch highlights of the game he played against the Charlotte Hornets. Go watch highlights of the game he played against the Memphis Grizzlies. You will be amazed by him at times. You will also be very, very frustrated with him at times. That's understandable. But ultimately, I think you'll become a fan of his. I think the mo most people who don't see Poku's potential don't watch him play because when I watch him play, given I am a biased Thunder fan, I think his potential is very, very obvious. I think he shows flashes of having skill a skill set like no other player in the NBA. So, in conclusion, hop on the Poku train before it's too late. You can hop on right now. Right now, I'm giving you permission to hop on the Poku train and say, I've been a fan of this guy since before he got good. Hop on right now. If you don't take this opportunity now, I'll give you about like, Till the start of next season. At the start of next season, it's too late. Don't hop on the train anymore because at that point, Poku is going to keep developing and you've missed the boat. So hop on the Poku train before you or while you can before it's too late. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys later. Real Wednesday. Bye.